Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have our Mox Pearl patron Nick, pounding Jetmere Nexus of Revels. This is a stack deck that uses its commander to pop up its creatures and win through combat damage. Nick's opening hand contains a Gemstone Caverns, Savannah, Command Tower, Green Sun Zenith, Dryad Militant, Hushbringer, and a Catilda Dawnheart Martyr. Next, we have our Mox Pearl patron Peter, who is an employee of Wizards of the Coast, piloting Kirik, son of Yogmoth. This deck uses its commander to cheat the mana cost of spells in order to assemble a number of combos quickly. Peter's opening hand contains a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, Imperial Seal, Beseech the Queen, Mana Vault, Reanimate, and his Lena Mulligans are Heartless Summoning and Bile and Tumor. After that, we have Ryan, Pounding Godo, Bandit Warlord. This deck seeks to cast its commander, fetch up Helm of the Host, and win through infinite combats. Ryan's opening hand contains a Mountain, Sandstone Needle, Argentum Armor, Goblin Welder, Wheel of Fortune, and his Lena Mulligans are Fork and Faithless Looting. Finally, we have Noah, piloting the partner pair of Kark the Thumbless and Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. This is a Storm deck that uses its commanders to break parity on spells through multiple coin flip copies. Noah's opening hand contains a Training Center, Rite of Flame, Strike It Rich, Overmaster, Swan Song, and his Lena Mulligans are Mind's Desire and Pyroblast. Without further ado, let's kick off this. Uh, you might be lost. Why don't you go back to where you came from? Hey, what about my world? What's wrong with your world? Is that some sort of children's game? That is not true. Hero Wars has vibrant graphics, cool gameplay, and a user-friendly interface. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. Yeah, tell them more about it. In Hero Wars, everyone can find a character to suit themselves. They have cyborgs, aliens, vampires. There is something for everyone. I've been playing for two weeks now, but only unlock about a third of the game. I'll unlock Chaba next. He is an awesome tank who literally devours his enemies. But Celeste is the real S tier. She can switch between DPS dark form and a healer light form, which makes her useful in many situations. Also, check out her super awesome outfit that dropped for her. Hero Wars is amazing. You're going to play it on the subway, at lectures, or even in between rounds at your local game store. By the way, from February 13th, you can gather soul stones and skin coins for three amazing heroes with new romantic skins that also boost their stats. Power up your team with Amira, Jorgen, and my favorite, Kira. It is super easy to start playing, but assembling that perfect team of heroes is definitely an art. For example, Mojo the Shaman can't heal Darkstar the Elf as efficiently as the good Grandma Martha can, while the Snow Cleaver makes a great pair with the Swift Isaac. Hero Wars is a world of six unique modes, more than 300 Guild War servers, and a hundred million players. You can play alone or see who among you and your friends is the top dog. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Here's a question for you. Where can you get 30,000 coins, 600 emeralds, and 500 awesome heroes to start dominating in Hero Wars right away? Too slow? The answer is in the link in the description below. Play Hero Wars now. A big thanks to Hero Wars for sponsoring today's video. Without further ado, let's kick off this dangerous Danish dainty dance. Nick won the egg holding contest and gets to start us off. Nick draws a card for turn and plays a Savannah. He casts a Dryad Militant much to the dismay of Peter and Noah. Nick passes. Peter draws and plays a Nick though, Shrine to Nick's. He casts a Mana Vault and passes. Ryan draws and plays a Sandstone Needle into play tapped. Ryan ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Training Center. He casts a Rite of Flame, adding two red. He casts his commander, Kark the Thumbless. Noah shifts the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Hushbringer. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Dryad Militant. Peter takes it and Nick gives the turn to Peter. Peter draws and plays a City of Traitors. He pays six life to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He pays six life through Kirik to help cast Beseech the Queen. Kirik triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. He fetches up an Entomb into his hand. He pays two life to help cast Entomb. Kirk triggers and gets another counter. He fetches up a Villas, Broker of Blood, into his graveyard. Peter pays two life to cast Reanimate, targeting Villas. Villas enters the battlefield and Peter loses eight life. Since Villas sees this life loss, Villas triggers and Peter draws eight cards. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Ancient Tomb. He pays four life to help cast Shieldred, the Apocalypse. Villas triggers and Peter draws four. He pays two life to cast Dark Ritual. Villas triggers and Peter draws two cards. Shieldred triggers and Peter gains four life. Then Peter adds three black. Peter pays two life through Kirk and two life to activate Villas, targeting Hushbringer. Villas triggers and Peter draws four. Shieldred triggers and Peter gains eight life. Then Hushbringer gets minus one, minus one. Peter does this again, paying four life, drawing four cards, then gaining eight life through Shieldred. Hushbringer then gets another minus one, minus one, killing it. Peter casts a Soul Ring. He activates Villas, paying four life, targeting Kark. Villas triggers, Peter draws four. Shieldred triggers and Peter gains eight. 
With the trigger still in the stack, he repeats this process over and over, drawing a total of 40 cards and gaining a total of 80 life. Then all the triggers resolve and Krark dies. Peter casts Lotus Petal. He pays 2 life to cast Reign of Filth, drawing 2 through Villas and gaining 4 life through Shieldred. He pays 4 life to help cast Professor Onyx, drawing 4 and gaining 8. He casts Chain of Smog, targeting himself. Professor Onyx triggers and drains everyone for 1. Chain of Smog resolves, Peter discards 2 and then continues the chain, targeting himself. He does this over and over, draining the table through Professor Onyx every time Chain of Smog is copied, and Peter wins the game. What an amazing and fast win through Peter. The team decided that they wanted another crack at it, so they win again. In this game, Peter brings back Kirik, son of Yogmoth, and his opening hand contains a Lake of the Dead, Swamp, Mox Diamond, Cut Down, Dothy Voidwalker, Jeweled Lotus, and an Emergence Zone. Ryan brings back Goto, Bandit Warlord, and his opening hand contains a Grim Monolith, Mana Vault, Mox Opal, Gemstone Caverns, Pyroblast, Thrill of Possibility, and his London Mulligan is the Dwarven Ruins. Noah brings back Kark the Thumbless and Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, and his opening hand contains a Mountain, Shivan Reef, Gemstone Caverns, Step Through, Jeweled Lotus, and his London Mulligans are Remand and Mog Salvage. Nick brings back Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels, and his opening hand contains a Champion of Lamholt, Esper Sentinel, Birds of Paradise, Bloom Tinder, Mana Confluence, Utopia Sprawl, and a Crop Rotation. And Peter gets to start us off. But Ryan and Noah have pregame actions. Ryan puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Pyroblast. Noah also puts the Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling a mountain. Peter draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Emergence Zone. He pays 6 life and cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. He pays 4 life through Kirik to cast Dothy Voidwalker. Kirik triggers and gets a counter. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts a Grim Monolith. He casts a Mox Opal. Ryan passes. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He passes. Nick draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast Birds of Paradise. Nick shifts the turn. Peter draws and plays a Beseju, who shelters all, into play tapped. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Dothy and Kirik. Ryan takes it and Peter gains 3 life. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws and casts a Mana Vault. He casts Thrill of Possibility, discarding Fork and drawing 2 cards. Fork and Thrill of Possibility are exiled under Dothy Voidwalker and Ryan passes the turn. Noah draws and plays an Island. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Krark. Peter takes it and Noah passes to Nick. Nick draws and casts an Esper Sentinel. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Crop Rotation, sacrificing Mana Confluence as an additional cost. He fetches up a Gaia's Cradle onto the battlefield. He casts a Bloom Tender. Nick passes. At the end of Nick's turn, Peter casts Cut Down, targeting Krark. Krark dies and the turn moves to Peter. Peter draws and taps his Beseju to cast Soul Ring. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Kirik. Ryan takes it and Peter gains 4 life. Peter ends his turn. Ryan draws, plays a Buried Ruin, and passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Noah cycles Step Through, fetching up a Spellseeker into his hand. Noah draws and casts Spellseeker. It enters and he fetches up a Snap into his hand. He attacks Peter with Sakashima. Peter takes it and Noah passes. Nick draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Utopia Sprawl, naming Red as it enters. He casts his commander, Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Esper Sentinel and Bloom Tender. Peter takes it and Nick ships the turn to Peter. Peter draws and casts Balthor the Defiled. Kirk triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts his commander, Goto, Bandit Warlord. It enters and Ryan fetches up a Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. He activates Helm, targeting Goto. In response, Nick flashes in a Cathar Commando. He then sacks Cathar Commando, destroying Helm of the Host. Then Helm of the Host goes into exile through Dothy Voidwalker with a Void Counter on it. Ryan, with very little way out of this mess, passes to Noah. Noah draws and casts Snap, targeting Jetmir. Kark triggers, Noah wins the flip, copying Snap, targeting Spellseeker. In response, Peter activates Dothy Voidwalker, sacrificing it, casting Ryan's Fork for free, targeting Snap. Fork resolves, creating a copy of Snap, targeting Noah's Kark. Peter taps his Beseju, floating mana, then Snap resolves, Kark bounces, and Peter untaps two lands. Then Noah taps his Shivan Reef, floating mana, Spellseeker bounces, and Noah untaps two lands. Then Noah floats mana, then the original Snap resolves, bounces Jetmere, and then Noah untaps two lands again. He casts Stormkiln Artist. He taps his Shivan Reef to cast Gamble. Stormkiln triggers and Noah creates a treasure. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Spellseeker. He casts Brainstorm and creates a treasure through Stormkiln. He draws three and then puts two back on top. He casts Ponder and creates a treasure again. He looks at the top three, doesn't like what he sees, shuffles and draws. He plays a Fiery Islet for turn. Finished up, Noah passes. Nick draws and plays a Champion of Lamholt. He casts a Vren Wingmare. Champion of Lamholt triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. Nick passes. 
Peter draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his draw step, Ryan takes the damage from his mana ball. He plays a snow-covered mountain for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal, paying the Esper tax. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Goto. Goto triggers, Ryan untaps it, and gains an extra combat. Peter blocks Goto with Kirik, Goto dies, and Peter gains 5 life. Finished up, Ryan ends his turn. Noah draws and taps his Fiery Islet to help recast his commander, Krark the Thumbless. Noah passes. Nick draws and also recasts his commander, Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels. Champion triggers and gets a counter. He casts Faber Elder and Champion gets a counter again. He casts a Mana Crypt. He moves to combat and attacks Peter with Vren Wingmare and Noah with Esper Sentinel, Bloom Tender, and Champion of Lamhole. Champion prevents anyone from blocking, so they both take the hit. All through, Nick gives the turn to Peter. Peter draws and casts Shieldra the Apocalypse. He passes. At the end of Peter's turn, Ryan pays to untap his Grim Monolith. During his draw step, Ryan takes a damage from his Mana Ball. Shieldra triggers and Ryan loses two life. In his main phase, he plays a Sandstone Needle into play tapped. He recasts his commander, Goto, Bandit Warlord. It enters and he fetches up a Hammer of Nizan onto the battlefield. Hammer triggers and Ryan attaches it to Goto. Ryan passes. During his draw step, Noah loses two life to Shieldred. In his main phase, Noah casts Underworld Breach. Esper triggers and Nick draws. Shieldred triggers and Nick loses two life. Noah escapes Gamble. Kark and Storm Kiln trigger. Noah creates a treasure and with the Kark trigger still on the stack, Peter pays six life through Kirk to activate Balthor, exiling it and returning all black and red creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield, which is his Dothy Voidwalker. Then Noah wins his flip, copies Gamble, and creates a treasure through Stormkiln. Then Noah fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Tybalt's Trickery into exile through Dothy. Then the original resolves and he fetches up a card into his hand and randomly discards Swansong into exile. Noah pays two life to catch a Jataxian Probe targeting Peter. He creates a treasure through Stormkiln, then loses his Quark Flip returning Jataxian Probe to his hand. He pays two life to catch a Jataxian Probe again. He creates a treasure, then loses his flip again, returning it to his hand. He pays two life to cast it again. He creates a treasure, then loses again, bouncing it back to his hand. He pays two life again to cast it again. He creates a treasure and, you guessed it, loses again, bouncing it back to his hand. Not one to back down from a challenge, he pays two life to cast it yet again. Stormkill triggers and creates a treasure, then Noah finally wins his flip, copying it, targeting Ryan. Stormkill triggers and creates a treasure. He looks at Ryan's hand and draws a card. Shielder triggers and Noah loses two life. He then looks at Peter's hand and draws a card, with Jataxian Probe getting exiled under Dothy. Shieldra triggers and Noah loses two life again. Noah plays a mountain and, unfortunately stopped in his attempt, passes, sacrificing Underworld Breach. During his upkeep, Nick wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he loses two life through Shieldred. He plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Basri Ket. He activates Basri's second ability. Nick moves to combat and attacks Noah with Champion of Lamholt, Jetmere, and Vring Wingmare, and attacks Ryan with Birds of Paradise, Esper Sentinel, Bloom Tender, and Faber Elder. Bastry triggers, creating seven 1-1 one -one soldiers, all attacking Peter. Champion of Lamholt triggers seven times, getting seven plus one plus one counter. Now no one can block due to the Champion of Lamholt, and since Jetmere gives all of Nick's creatures plus three plus oh, Vigilance, Trample, and Double Strike, they all take it, die to combat damage, and Nick wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a surprising set of games tonight. Congrats to Peter and Nick on their wins. In Game 1, everyone knew that Peter's deck was fast, but a turn 2 win is still very surprising. His utility with Villas and Shieldred became an unstoppable combination that allowed him to draw through his deck. He took that and turned it into a quick win. In Game 2, Nick was able to build up his advantage while laying low enough to avoid detection. Ryan and Noah going for their wins kept the focus off of Nick until he was able to land his commander and swing for the win. The most valuable card in Game 1 tonight goes to Villas, Broker of Blood. This card, in conjunction with Kirik, is simply unstoppable. When Peter combined it with Shieldred, the table knew the game was over. The most valuable card in Game 2 goes to Dothy Boardwalker. While Champion of Lamhold allowed Nick's creatures to be unblockable, Dothy did so much work this game. Dothy exiled Ryan's Helm of the Host, copied Snap to bounce Kirk, then completely hosed Noah's Underworld Breach turn. This card is so backbreaking in CEDH, and it was showcased in true form tonight. A big thanks to Hero Wars again for sponsoring today's video. Check out their link in the description below. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.